I want to fight this guy. No. No one wants to take this fight because it's just really hard. Really? Loses his whole stalwart because he wasn't paying attention. Guys pulling through, or the other guys? Guess I'll come up behind them. Yeah. Well, kill up a couple of stalwarts. I tried my best, but it wasn't good enough. Kill a whole stalwart, you know, it does take a lot though. Also, what the hell? Do I, do I have less? Do I get less out of it? That's so weird. I thought I would get more. Lower cooldown, shorter thing. I think I get like half as much, which is really lame. We really should be chasing after them, since like, standing here and waiting for them is just idiotic. I tried to do the setup, but it's just like really sad. <laughs> he needs someone else to block for him if he wants to do the setup. They're really good at holding positions though. Can't lie to that. My HP just dropped like crazy just there.
Nah, you need to stay here because once they push through the other side. Although they were meant to push through the other side, what are you waiting for? An invitation? I like how the camels are bugged here. He's activated two, which is passive, which is like a toggle, and they're going nowhere. <laughs> Sides and it's just like didn't actually achieve anything. Now the other side's open because they freed it up. Now we could have gone in. Look how much space we've got now. We could have come up to this rear as well. I mean, like, people are stupid. Everyone switches to the strong side because that's where everyone eats. I don't blame them. It's just easier being on the side that just has less resistance. But when everyone heads to the same side, you just end up walking into more resistance. Oh, hi. Oh, I bugged out because I died. My house skulls bugged out because I died. House skulls should not struggle that much with breaking through shields. I think, uh, I think the, I think house skulls themselves. Neither need more defenses or their attack option needs to be stronger against shield units. That's the kind of balance that's really difficult to get right. Make Huskulls too good against other shield units and you just have Huskulls. Because they're already good against pike units. But I mean, like, we, we don't exactly have very many options that are good against shield units. And not to mention, a lot of the options that we do have against good against shield units just fucking die. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. I didn't even kill that many, did I? Muskets are doing nothing to the shield unit, except for the little knockback. 
sometimes. See, they have shield units, we don't, and we're dying. Once those shield units get to the front, bam, our front line just completely falls apart. We have a lot of these guns, but they're practically useless. They don't even do any block break damage. No block damage on those range units. I mean, like, again, if it did, then the shield units would just be like, oh, fuck me. I'm getting shot. Never want a scenario where. trip there it is why did it take like 10 years for it to come in I'm getting slowed by something what the hell Hey, thanks for the follow. Don't know how to say that, unfortunately. So, if you can teach me, that'd be fine. That's great. Yeah, why is there no trip in the center? Again, like, everything was blocked by buildings. There were clearly times where we could have gotten in and gotten, gotten ground, but we kept getting pushed out because everyone kept bitching out of it. Annoying to say the least. I would have walked straight into it and blocked it because there's only one halberd. That the control that dies, you're screwed. Shield, try to preserve the shield units. Fucking damn it, man! You know it's funny that like palace guards' grace is not strong enough anymore. That they actually lose head on, head on to loyal guards. I mean that should have been true before, but like. It's just hilarious since, like, palace guards have, like, three times as much block rate, comparatively. Oh my god, I just got hit by something massive! Get out, get off me. Seriously, he just didn't fucking he didn't die. And you're retreating your guys out? Less than a minute to go, and we and the guys are retreating out. Should have kept the pressure up. Now 
The Halberd should have just went into attack mode. If you weren't gonna... Man, no. You, ah, man. You shouldn't have gotten them out, because there was no point to you. One. Big fat Trev right into the center of the enemy. That two lands on the fucking wall. What a tragedy. Oh yay, they made it easier now. <sighs> Man! Only 48? What is this? I killed an- I killed a free! An absolute free! Stalwart. And what the hell did I kill that I only got that much? God damn it. I need to find counters for mass. Yeah, I know, right? There is no counter to mass LG spam. You just come, you just have to flank them. That's it. That's all you do. You have to just flank them. As long as you flank them, you win. But it's just like, god damn. How am I gonna flank? <sighs> Questions. So many questions. Just like how I do this, how I do that. I don't know the answer to mass LG spam because, like, even back when LG like first released, it's just like all you saw was LG spam. What do you do against that? Can't do anything against that because there's no unit in the tier four that actually is really good against shield. Like, in terms of infantry. You have... Okay, so... You actually have Cerex. Notably supposed to be really great against shields. But the dumb thing here is that... They just cl don't do enough damage. They're just not worth a damn. And even then, it's just like... Cerex are just like so powerful that they can actually... They probably could. Can I bring Xerix? Can bring Xerix. I want to bring my Claymores again since Claymores normally get me pretty good. Um, like, okay, don't get me wrong. Xerix, I hit shields hard. But against Stalwarts, it's just like, yeah, sure, so you, so you hit us. You hit us real hard. But we're not dead yet. We don't die. Because, you have to remember that, like, Stalwarts have bullshit frontal defenses, so, like, you cannot beat Stalwarts from the front, and that's a, that's almost like a fact. That, like, I think even, even Varangian Guards struggle to defeat, struggle to defeat, um, Stalwarts from the front. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. It's really hard as a mole player to deal with shield units like this as well i can't i mean if i change my setup if i go for a different setup i could probably aim to deplete um their block instead i need to change the maelstrom though that's probably a better option than what i'm doing currently What the 
hell happened to all of the cannons? I swear to god there was some. Did he absolutely annihilate them all? Yeah, it looks like some guy's a hot shot here. Well, I guess I'll go for the trip while this thing still exists. And I aim for straight through it. Excellent. Exactly what I wanted to do. Enemy battering ram has reached the gates. Yeah, partial. Need to aim high so I hit the base. But not so high that I just shoot straight through it. Ow. And he destroyed it. Sad. The enemy siege tower has reached the wall. Enemy siege tower has been destroyed. The enemy siege tower has reached the wall. First blood. underestimate my power. Also, thanks for the save there. Holy shit. Anyway. <laughs> he saved my butt. Harsh reality. You will never kill soul wars from the front. Well, if you're trying, it's gonna take cost a lot more damn than stalwarts. Another set of stalwarts. You need to break the formation. One of the most important things. Break the formation. Destroy the. Break the formation. Destroy the cohesion. And what the fuck did I just get hit by? Stupid axes. My horse! You can't. You dilapidated. Are we just gonna get surrounded? I really wanted to go for that stalwart there in the corner. I need a new horse though. Give me a new horse first. Huh? Sounds like horses went through the center. Oh, Christ. Come on. Where are you at? A lot of archers just got killed. That's very unfortunate. More archers. Side here. Not yet, they haven't pushed down. Whoop! Oh well. Oh, he, the horses missed my guys in the corner there. He would he could have gotten so many kills. <laughs> Form up! 
That like that. That's unfortunate. Units assemble. Attack. This unit still is on cooldown. The enemy has captured point B. Into position. The enemy captured the point. Don't stand like that, that's really dumb. For me. Anyway. Really? Holy oh, shit. My command. Loose. What kind of bullshit was that, Trev? He must have known that I was gonna move them. Ah, shit. Hmm? No, it's still the same old when they changed it the first time. Yes, Captain. Yes, Captain. Everyone's retreating because they want to swap out their units. I lost so many this time. I kill like basically nothing compared to what. Oh my goodness. I basically kill basically nothing compared to what. Yeah, I know, right? Look! Don't get me wrong. If it was just one stalwart, fine. But look how many look how many stalwarts are stacked up on top of each other. I am trading so badly with my Xerx right now. I am supposed like Xerx are meant to counter shield units, and I, 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 I am not killing like an entire shield unit with a single charge. Like not even the follow up charges do enough damage. Not against stalwarts anyway. From the front, dude, mine. This is all from the front. The strongest state you can never see a stalwart is from the front, and it's just like nightmare, pain in the butt, but nightmare. Which I'm just gonna throw these guys out. Throw these guys in for. I 
I love it. I love it. I mean, like, I knew that was gonna happen, but... Jesus Christ, I hate photo brushers. Yeah, what are those stupid guns gonna do now? I'm not even shooting anything. about to capture the final flag. Fourteen. I got fourteen kills with the Serps. <sighs> Try to use some other units and everyone's just using just using meta units and just like you just look at yourself and just like why am I intentionally handicapping myself? Do I hate do I hate like fun? Is this fun? Or I or <sighs> Is this my idea of fun? Cause it seems very painful. <laughs> Must hate fun. Questa è casa mia. Nessuno può invaderla. For the clan. For our chief. For free. For the right of the There is much. Noi lavoriamo nelle retrovie. I don't know why I'm just using the claymores a lot. Do I think they're good? Of course they're OP at the very least. They have massive damage resistance. They have AOE attacks. I think the one of the major things is just like the claymores do excellent job at like surviving and dishing out damage. But once their passives are down, you're pretty much crap. I'll probably play maybe two more games. A third one, if I don't count this one. Depends on my mood. Depends on how, how much more suffering I can play. I'm at the stage where I'm getting frustrated with my losses. And it's not because I'm not... It, it, it's because I'm just being unsuccessful with the units I'm bringing. I know I'm bringing garbage units, but it's just... 
it's that not the point i should be able to have limited success i don't even get limited success holy fuck ow jesus christ that was painful right old right old pain right there Alright, so I do think they may have nerfed the amount of healing I got. So they reduce the cooldown, but I get reduced healing as well. That's unfortunate. Should have just had the reduced healing and... I mean, should have just had the reduced cooldown with the same healing amount. That would have been fun. Well, not fun for things, to say the least. Just would have been better at the very least. Yes, can you please stop shooting my guys? I'll let you kill them if you just let me hit the battering ram. Come on, destroy it already. I'm just waiting for that one thing. Thank you. Holy shit, Fenris, let's go. I'm gonna take the wall. I am not. Oh, I got hit by a fucking arrow. I took a I took an arrow to the knee there. Not even the knee. I just fuck to the back. Like all my fenders are just sitting there. Fine, it's fine. Have all of these artillery and not one of them facing. At least they can turn far enough. Not that one. That one probably didn't far turn far enough. I'm gonna try to break this. Gotta go through it. I lost one instantly? What the hell? I don't even know where my guys are at. Oh, they're there. Didn't even fucking chase after whoever. Be 
Holy shit! Oh well. These guys are gonna die anyway. still crazy uh, also like I noticed that they shredded through the stalwarts thing like they shredded like absolutely shredded oh, oh well tried I didn't kill us. I didn't kill anything there. That's really sad. That's not good. That's no one's about to be surrounded, which is not what you want. Also, I was being kind of really silly jumping in like that. Ah, oh, yep, Berserker's just shredding through everything again. So must have buffed the Berserkers somehow, somewhat. See what's happening on that stupid thing. Kill eight guys. My entire Claymore unit almost died to kill eight guys. They held off for a long time as well.
That was an entire foot of Russia just there, walking past us. Hi. Bye. Ah, oh, hi Emma. I am doing okay ish. Could be better. I'm getting my ass beat because I'm just doing some really stupid things. Also, again, proving how strong Berserkers are. For some reason, their block break is up like. Their block break is up again somehow. Or they changed it to be up again, so. Yeah. Uh, I don't even have doctrines on these guys, and they did very well. Like, really well. Surprisingly well. What about you? You having fun? I haven't. I, I'm working towards the camel lances. I didn't. Uh, I didn't pay for them. I'll probably pay for the hashashkins though. Go ahead. Hit me. Hit me with your best question. Just vibing. <laughs> So what's your question? Hit me. Lay it on me. Put it. Give it to me straight. Tell me, Doctor. Do you have a favorite game of all time? If yes, then what? Do I have a favorite game of all times? Okay, so... My favorite game of all time would have to be Agent Baisu. Why? It was one of the first game I got heavily invested into. The reason why Age of Empires 2 is so my favorite game of all time is not because it's an old classic, but because it is my favorite. Because it's one of the it it is it is the first game that I really took time to learn. What the hell I was doing. And it was fascinating to me back then. I did go on to love Rome Total War. And it's, uh... And Medieval 2. I think Medieval 2 was a great evolution from Rome Total War. I do believe Medieval... I do believe that the Total War series have gone downhill after Empire. I hated, I basically, I dislike most of the stuff that comes after Empire. Shogun 2 was actually quite good. Um, it kind of pushed the limit of what the Warscape engine did for the Total War series. The the sad thing is, is that although Total um, Age of Empires 2 is my favorite game, it's, um, it's harder to play it nowadays. 
most of my memories is just doing menial things that I would consider menial things. So I see a lot of, I don't see a lot of fun in it compared to now, now, back to when I used to play it. It's also hard it's also hard to get past the evolution in graphics. You want to see visual feedback which is very difficult for stylized games to portray. You want a sense of spectacular or grandness. The realism is part of the reason why it was so good. The fantasy of it is also a good reason, but reality itself, when you, when you can closely relate a game to reality, um, you can immerse yourself just that little bit further into the game. I mean, like, I also did go through a Call of Duty phase where, I mean, I started off with Call of Duty 4, arguably the best Call of Duty to ever start, to ever have started off the franchise with. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, very fun on the multiplayer side. Um, you're constantly replaying it, being able to be a little bit different. The, the changes, I think, which would be, I think... Probably not as intuitive. What the hell is happening? Someone actually climbed with surfs? And I just realized I put my claymores on the thing. <laughs> the siege tower has reached I didn't realize I put my claim I didn't realize oh, I put my claymores on those. To Unfortunately, no. I actually never played uh, Warcraft nor Command and Conquer until much later. I played Warcraft 3. Um I played Warcraft 3, but modded versions of it, mostly in net cafes when I was overseas, since uh, they were fairly popular. The Civilization series is also one that I've never actually played. I have not played an extensive amount of it. I've seen people play it. I think I understand most of the concept, but I've not played anything like it. Come on, man. I have to kind of predict where you're going. It's kind of hard. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna just fight it on the ground. See if I can take out some archers. Got an archer unit, half of a tundra. I don't even think I got the half of the tundra properly either. Two guys came up onto me there though. The unfortunate thing there is that, uh, like, my claymores are not very good at taking out tigers.
could not kill very many. That's unfortunate. I think uh, the struggle there was um, ran into a lot of the. Holy shit! Ow. Uh, agreed. Good choice of games for sure. Was Oblivion your first Elder Scroll game? No, it was Skyrim. My first uh, Elder Scroll game was Skyrim. Am I a full-time streamer? No, I am not a full-time streamer. I stream only on Monday. Although I would love to stream full-time. Fortunately, it just doesn't pay well. But that being said, I mean, like, if I had 200, if I had 200, um, viewers at the current ad rate, I could easily quit, I could easily earn enough, um, earn enough. But that's assuming that there's 200 people actually willing, willing to watch me. I think it's about 200. Maybe 300. It's either 200 or 300. Yeah, cannot fight that. Oh, fuck sake. Whatever. I just lost my guys as well. There. Oh, fuck sake. I ate a berserker. I, I ate a berserker fury there. Ah, damn. Well, I'm out of units, so that's uh, not, not good for me. Oh, man. Ow, that's painful. I'm gonna jump over and go for the Fortarasho instead. Oh! I got hit. Missed. They're behind you. Oh fuck me. Am I dead? I think I'm close to death. Poison? Yeah, poison. <sighs> At this point, I just do not deal enough damage to really kill anything. Which is surprising since like, as a mole, I should be doing like tons of damage. But I'm pretty sure other classes are doing way more, you know, like have way more damage than I do. Units, assemble! 
Like how fake and glossy the hair looks with the gray. Oh man, the last few challenges just, just really struggling. I get, I guess I get these two, and then I can get these three easily. Let's get these two. Oh man. I think this might be my last game for tonight. Sarkistatus. Noi lavoriamo nelle retrovie. Also, I realized that I really shouldn't use Claymores as a solo unit. I actually gimp myself because Claymores, um, Claymores are actually a really great support unit. So I, I waste half of my potential by fighting in fights when I'm the only one there. <laughs> I, if I have no allies, I basically, uh, basically, if you're Claymore, if you're playing Claymores and you're not fighting around your allies, um. You are actually killing, you're actually unutil not utilizing half your potential, which is to heal and to give the defensive buff to your allies, which is one of the major things, I think, about Claymores, which um, I keep forgetting. It's really powerful by itself, don't get me wrong, but like, you put two Claymores together and they're just some monsters. I'm pretty sure that like if you put two claymores together, they're they're way tankier than any combination of two um of any other combination of two units. I don't believe that there is any unit that gets that it that can go toe to toe with two claymores simultaneously. Uh, maybe shield maidens will beat the shit out of them, but it'll take a while. If you stun lock them, yeah, sure says that. I do believe that they're pulling away from the CC immunity shit. Dropping it down to just frames for moments at a time. If it's for a long time, then we got problems. If you have CC immunity for like the 12 seconds that Iron Reapers do, then yikes. There are some issues with the whole sword only getting the CC immunity while the flails don't get CC immunity during Tiger Step. I think that's uh, intentional bias, which is uh, bullshit. I think they should change that. Either make both of them CC immune or neither. I've already taken down the wall and I still fail at this. The 
Bright siege tower is preparing to advance. Too high. Oh no, we'll go on point. The left siege tower is advancing. One thing I do have to say, they make it very hard to appreciate low tier units when you're facing against high tier units. how berserk like at the start of the day it was just all stalwarts then all of a sudden we have so many berserkers like look how many berserkers are there our battering ram is advancing Oh, also, what's been bugging me was, um, you know when I was attacking on Heilong Fjord and I was trying to take a supply point against Berserkers, and I lost two of my guys, almost, almost four, because the Berserkers went into rage, and I thought I, I thought I activated my three, but I just remembered that, like, I need to be a bit more preemptive about that, because, Jesus Christ, I just realized that, um, my lag made it so that, my claymores, although it looked like I activated my skill at the same time he did, actually did was not being protected by the for freedom, uh, which is really garbage. I think it's really garbage anyway. Really, middle siege tower is a death sentence. Why would you ever go middle siege tower? Not only do you easily get sandwiched. Yeah, well, whatever. The bravest of the brave. Their gate has been destroyed. <laughs> Your unit is retreating. Right. 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 Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Seth. Yeah, we're just here for points, that is. Why go middle? Middle? Death sentence. Literally a death sentence. I don't even know. Really? Thanks for the food, though. And we lost one to AFK. Great. Ah, for fuck's sake, man. Our 
A walk in the park. Oh well, they just let us take the supply point, I guess. We capture the point. Holy shit! Ah, uh, that was an accident. <laughs> I overshot that one. Ah, uh, what region am I playing? Sorry, I... Mm. If you're still here, I'm playing in the, um... Asia region. So... This is Asia 1. I'm playing on Asia 1, otherwise known as Lotus Ash C. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. The different servers. Lots of... Quite a few different servers, actually. One thing I do have to say... Well, the unfortunate reality is... This game's got a really good cross-service like system where you can have lots of players from one server play with other players from a different server and I mean that's great but at the same time it's just like when you cross server with regions that are way too far away from you just imagine uh, cross servering from here in Asia all the way to uh, something somewhere like America that's like on the other side of the world oh thanks Dad. Your unit is retreating. That would be a headache, very much pain in the butt. 
I'm gonna probably get annihilated really fast here, but I'm going to try my best to annihilate these guys as fast, just as fast. My command. <laughs> and just straight up, we just win before any of my other shots land. Excellent, excellent job, guys. Well, I do have to say, they have made the game a little bit more grindy. Every week I gotta do my bandits, every day I gotta do my um, deploy and defend. I really wish they just make my deploy and defend one. I really hope that they just made... It would just really be cool if they just made the bandit one. You just have to do it once, one and done kind of thing. I understand that sometimes the grind needs to be there just just to make people feel tedious. Because if they chew through the content too fast, then there won't be enough content to go around. I understand that. But with that said and done, I think that's it for me. Uh, I guess I'll do some... Uh, well, I didn't get very good one. Well, I I did get double archer one, so that's a really good one. I put that on my... Um, put that on my Imperial Eagle... Um, Eagle Imperial Archers here. So I got the Piercing Volley. Today I got the Piercing Volley. Probably every week I'll save up everything and see what I can get. I, about every week you can get you can get purples. I mean, like you can get eight purples to roll for a tier three and above. So at the current rate, I think if you can get eight purples every week, ten weeks with ten weeks with four thousand, I think you could probably get get a free, if not earlier, actually. Um. You could you could probably get through the fusion thing, maybe three, maybe no, I think three would be a max. So naturally, I'm saying is that like the amount of fusion you end up doing, you'll end up with possibly um possibly three tier five free tier fives, and then you got got a, um so you got like a bunch of thirty or so of the normal stuff. And that's per season, I think. Which is actually pretty good. Um, so not only are you double dipping, so you get you get you get your epics naturally, the same rate as we always have. Um, which is which has always been very hit and miss, but another shot at more doctrines is always great. I would say that they pretty much quadrupled the rate that you farm doctrines but the limit is a little bit higher the low the, the floor is a little bit lower though sorry the floor is a little bit higher sorry 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 the floor higher the ceiling a little bit higher than before but not as high so the floor and the ceiling are closer together um so so i do believe over time you'll get those super whack really cool setups but i think when you're starting off as a new player um you will quickly you will quickly match up to the older players just not straightforward since it is still rng good luck on the draw and that being said i mean like i haven't actually looked at all of this all of the fusion preview stuff i mean Apparently someone already has this. One of my one of my guildmates have has this. Apparently it's not very good. Slashes at the enemy, then moves forward, then moves towards them and follows up with three slashes. Each attack can hit two additional enemies, so that seems very powerful. This one seems very powerful, actually. All penetration up by 140. Poison damage up by 60, which is interesting. The wards are quite impressive, I would say. The amount of defense they give. 
Although I would say that the defensive ward is probably the best. Piercing one might be might be good as well. Like if you're just facing up against piercing stuff. Great Bastion, always something gr great to have. Great Bastion and Dependable. Both these together combined is like OP as. Um, hmm. Advanced Guard. Deals to heroes. Makes you a bit safer against heroes at the very least. This offensive one. Probably a go-to for nearly every unit. 120 damage to units plus 80 damage. To all damage types. The sprint one is very good utility. Movement speed, really great. This one is kind of cool. In reduces charge cooldown by 24%, increases max charge target by one. I think Serex would definitely see some definitely need need something like that. While act, whoa! While active, increase all damage by 120. That's that's even more insane. But I mean, like instead of increasing by 120 just flat out, while while active makes sense. This charge block break one. It should you should be able to put this on Huskulls, but you can't. I wish you could. It would be so good on Huskulls. Sword and shield units deal 200 to infantry and increase block by 250. Wow, yeah, no, this one would be really good for her skulls and for Varangians. Good thing that shield maidens can't get this. If shield maidens could get this, I, I think I would die. I think I would just flat out be like, just, just get rid of shield maidens. At this point, I hate them. I look at this, and I say to myself, oh yeah, this is cool, but at the same time, I'm just like, a pike unit is, like, pike, like, polearm units are going, are so, have so much, so many options to stack up against cavalry that it's retarded. Look at this. Reduces damage taken by 40% while braced. Increases braced damage to cavalry by 16%. Then we have empower slow effect against cavalry by 15%. Increase damage dealt to cavalry by 10%. That's together, that's 26% more damage to cavalry. Not to mention, most most polearm units already have a bonus against cavalry. This spear one, not actually that great. Increases block by 300, reduces damage taken by 90. Pretty garbo, you ask me. This defensive one's not bad. It's better than the uh, dependable one. By, by a big margin, by 50. So it's like, increase all defense by 130 instead of 80. And reduces damage taken by 6 instead of 5. So, Spearman definitely got some really good doctrines out of these things. This one in particular is really great. Because it reduces damage taken from cavalry charge by 500. And reduces, um, reduces damage taken from rear attacks by 20%. So... Even some like utility ones add addition uh, add additional effects that are just crazy. Like put this on stalwarts. Put this on stalwarts. I guarantee you, you stalwarts are now anti cavalry because of that because of this doctrine. Regeneration also damage taken while armor pierced by thirty five percent also reduce um also really great. So they reduce the weaknesses. Not that I really like the armor break thing. So, like, when it says armor pierce, there is a special pierce state when you run out of block. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't understand that. So, it's good. It's it's a good thing to always bring up. I'm not sure whether or not pe people have or get told about this. A lot of things are always a, bit, um, a little bit vague. Javelin infantry get that 30 increase in ammo. Again, this is really weird. Instead of percentage, it's a flat. Because it's a flat, it's better on units that have low ammo count than it is on units with high ammo count. So, Javelin Sergeants actually don't benefit from this doctrine as much as something, say, Retriades. Well, I mean, technically, 
technically, like, okay, so I am now getting into some technical things. It's actually how many models they have, not how much ammo they have. So it's just like, if you got Javelin, if you got Imperial Javelineers, they go from three throws to four throws. Uh, Javelin, uh, surprisingly, Javelin Sergeants will go from something like five throws to like six and a bit throws. Um, Retiaris would, would go from like, I think it's the five throws? I think it's, I think it's, I think it's five throws. Um, their five throws goes to seven throws. Seven throws and a bit. And it's just like, wow, that's a lot. This one's more powerful than you think it would, would be. That 100 piercing damage could be multiplied by their piercing damage of the throw itself. So, this is pretty good because uh, we, we do know some numbers, but like, give an example. I think um, the piercing damage from uh, Javelin Sergeant is something like 350%. Pretty huge, in fact. Arrow Rain, pretty good. Um, the the base now being increased to 75 and increases piercing damage by 150. It just over overall, like, Arrow Rain is such a great utility skill in and of itself because you don't have to aim at shit. It will automatically aim for you. The extra damage is, like, icing on top. Increases range even further, 9 meters, and also fire rate by 9%. Uh, armor penetration is nice. So, archers can get up to 18% more fire rate than they did before. Just looking at the fusion doctrines. How crazy would it be to actually have a fully decked out unit with all of these new doctrines? What's surprising here is doctrines that that should are missing or don't have a version of the new one. So there's a fire rate one for the firearm one, but it ends almost as quickly as it starts. There are only two doctrines for firearm units in this level. Increase fire rate by 20%, increase damage to cavalry by 8%, which is kind of insane to me. Uh, making muskets anti-cavalry, this is strange. And the Mobile Bastion, which is a really good one, um, increases defense by 60. But unfortunately, it counts as a defensive type one, which is unfortunate because it overlaps. Um, the ammo added to it makes it very useful. But we don't have our accuracy one. What happened to our accuracy one? Like... I understand that firearm units don't have very many doctrines in the first place, but the accuracy one, is, there, there should have been an accuracy one because we have an epic accuracy one, but maybe they didn't want to put more more power into an accuracy one. So I guess they realized that it was like too powerful anyway. But at the same time, it's just like, where's my fire rate for my crossbow infantry? Look at this. We have ammo by 35%. 35% uh, piercing armor penetration by 140. We have our piercing damage firing accuracy by 40%. This is a really, really insane accuracy. Your crossbows at 40% accuracy are never going to miss. Never going to miss. What's the, what's, the, what's the normal one like? 20%. At 20%, they basically never miss. At 40%, they are not going to miss, even from a mile away. The extra piercing is okay. And then you got the fire rate on the double shot. And I think this is... I think this is really dumb. It's... Instead of each shot, it should be volley. I think that's... Uh, I think they fucked that one up again. Yeah.
I mean, the fire rate of 12% plus the 23%, uh, you can get... I mean, the 23% natural, so you got a 35% increase in fire rate. So you still, you can put these three new ones, still have the other two, which are very, which are very powerful. Like the 200 armor penetration, I should have one somewhere. Arrow rain, here we go. The 50 piercing damage, 200 armor penetration, and you get this one as well. Get the three other, get the three other ones, and you're looking at a crossbow unit that's um, you you've never seen the power before. The cavalry ones always just gives me a headache. I mean, like similarly to the infantry one, 40% damage while um, reduced damage taken while charging. But these things, oh my goodness, reduce damage while charging by 50% and increase movement speed by 9%. Why don't we have infantry equivalent? Like each of these. For the cavalry are way stronger. This one reduces damage taken by 50% and also incre um, reduces down the charge by 6%. And then we got this one and it's just like, oh my goodness, reduces charge by 14 seconds. Like, I have this combination on my, oh actually I have it one down, so I have stalwart charge 4, so it reduces cooldown by 4 seconds instead of 6. But I have this on my Cortelia. My Cortelia has a two second cooldown charge. I can perpetually charge my Cortelias, although I have to I have to reset my unit because I can't charge into a charge, unfortunately. This melee this melee cavalry one looks very powerful, but melee cavalry in general is just not that good. This one's really good though. I mean infantry counter type, that's a very interesting type. Um I have yet to see any mounted archers actually be good, <laughs> because, like, even if you had both of these doctrines, like, most, like, there is no high tier, high tier, like, mounted archer unit, so, you really don't see the low tier ones either, the bow, the bow rider ones were just, like, they were nerfed somehow, so you just end up being weaker. All of these should be similar. There shouldn't be any special ones. Imagine if they had some doctrines here that weren't up there. Anyway, I mean, that's it. Like, it's a lot of power in the tier f in in the new doctrines. I don't like it. I don't think it's very healthy for the game. But I will say that current balance, they're doing a lot of shadow changes. I like them. I really do. They fixed. So what I figured out was they fixed the Imperial Archers Bodkin Arrow. I mean, yeah, Bodkin Arrow. Um. Not many people are going to like this one, but Varangian Guards are weaker. So what happens with them is that their auto great sweep. So when you switch to axes, Varangian Guards get a free great sweep attack. A special, kind of like a... They basically do a free special. That had CC immunity. It also got more damage and healed them when they were below 50%. Kind of the same as normal axe, axe skills, but now it's been changed. They no longer have the CC immunity, they still have the bonus damage and heals, which is really great. Which is really great. Um, removing a little bit of CC immunity, something that's uh, not overtly, um, no, not overtly, um, like, they didn't just remove all of the CC immunity with no, like, with no return, because if they were to remove all of the CC immunities, Varangian Guards would just end up being unable to do their job, so... You, what would end up happening is that you would need to pull more, put more defenses on a unit that not CC immune in order to guarantee that they are able to trade well. The CC immunity, what the CC immunity does is that it guarantees the unit to trade. A lot of units that require CC immunity are the units that really don't trade well. That's, that's mostly for non-shielded units. Varangian Guards are shielded, but when they switch to Axes, they're not. 
Um, I'm very sad about condos. My goodness, uh, how sad I am about condos. Prefecture guards, not so sad about those guys. Those guys are still OP in my t in, in, to me. They are still OP. Other than that, um, I haven't really noticed very much of anything else. I mean, Fen I mean, like if you if you remember with Fenris, um, they used to stack on top of each other, but uh, people have already realized that for a long time. They no longer stack on top of each other when they activate the two ability. Outriders, surprising nerf to them. You never, I barely saw them during the tier three. Um, even if I did see them, they weren't much of an issue to deal with with my unit. I mean, by myself, I would explode. But yeah. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. But other than that, my name's Azakai. Have a nice day. Bye now.